meditation on the larger catechism this morning, we look at question number 169, number 169, which reads as follows, How hath Christ appointed bread and wine to be given and received in the sacrament of the Lord's <coughs> Supper? The answer of the larger catechism is, Christ hath appointed the ministers of his word in the administration of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper to set apart the bread and wine from common use by the word of institution, thanksgiving, and prayer. To take and break the bread, and to give both the bread and the wine to the communicants, who are by the same appointment to take and eat the bread and to drink the wine in thankful remembrance that the body of Christ was broken and given and his blood shed for them. The catechism focuses on the sacraments of this time, and uh, we've considered baptism. Now we are looking at the Lord's Supper, that communion meal that Christ has given to his church to be a, a sign and seal of his grace to us, uh, emblems of his death and sacrifice on our behalf. As we take part in the communion meal, we are reminded that we are joined to Christ. We are one in Him. And His uh, broken body and shed blood are given to us for our salvation. So we receive grace as we take part in the communion meal. There's a, there is a proper way in which the communion meal is to be served. It's not to be uh, given to just anyone to administer the Lord's Supper. You find sometimes in uh, fellowships or a variety of Christian groups that uh, there is a certain casualness with regard to the use of the communion meal. Uh, some folks take it as they please. I've heard of some congregations where the communion elements are put out and people can come up when they feel ready for it and uh, take it to their seat or go off someplace and take the communion element when they feel spiritually prepared and ready for that. The uh, Elements are given within the life of the church and under the structure and discipline of the church. And so the oversight of this uh, sacrament is committed to those who are officers in Christ's church, those who are ordained for that purpose. The sacrament has a close relationship to the ministry of the Word. In fact, the sacrament reflects the ministry of the Word in a visible manner. So we have the Word explained to us verbally in the pulpit and the teaching ministry of the church, and then in the sacraments the Word is uh, presented to us in picture form, as it were, so that we can see Christ uh, crucified for us. And this ministry of Word and sacrament is entrusted to those who are officers in Christ's church. In part, uh, the communion meal is part of the fellowship of Christ's church, and uh, the use of the meal is designed to enhance that fellowship. We begin the communion meal with a word of institution, whereby we explain uh, the, uh, the sacrament itself, its meaning, and what Christ has given the sacrament for. It's given to the church, not to the whole world, but simply to the church. And also, it's given to the church who is walking with Christ. If you're not walking with Christ, even though you might be a member of Christ's church, if you're not walking in communion with Christ, then the meal is not ready for you. You are not ready, more particularly, for the meal. And sometimes, in the old Presbyterian tradition, you have the idea of the fencing of the table, or the sense that the elders have a responsibility to ensure that the communion meal is not just given indiscriminately to all, but only to those who are walking in fellowship with Christ. So there is an exercise of church discipline in the elements of the sacrament. The sacrament tells us that we have communion with Christ in this church. Well, the elders are entrusted with ensuring that you are walking in communion with Christ in his church. And then have a right to the communion meal. So the, the sacrament is not given for any to use however they wish. But there is an order which Christ has given uh, within his church uh, for our benefit and growth in Christ. Uh, the uh, sacrament is set apart uh, from common food. 
the bread and cup are set aside from ordinary meals. You remember Paul and his words to the Corinthians warned the church against uh, approaching the table uh, in, in a way that does not have regard to the specialness of this communion meal. It was not just an ordinary meal that you can eat at, at your pleasure. And some of the farmers were coming, they were eating uh, much of the bread and much of the wine and not leaving enough over for anybody else. This is not an ordinary meal. It's set apart. It is a sacrament and designed to teach us spiritual things. It's set apart by that word of institution that I mentioned a moment ago, thanksgiving and prayer. Uh, we don't magically transform the elements into the body and blood of Christ, as you see in the Roman Catholic Church, but uh, they are set apart from ordinary elements and set aside for this meal. The uh, elders and the pastor are to take the bread and give both the bread and the wine to the communicants. The Catechism is addressing a conflict with the Roman Church whereby the cup was withheld from the laity for a period of time and only a wafer would be given to the laity. Christ's appointment was that the church, the people of God, should receive both bread and cup. Uh, the whole body of Christ. All that he is is given to the whole of Christ's church and not to be limited simply to the clergy who are on an elevated status in some fashion within the life of the church. It's given to the whole church uh, for our spiritual benefit and growth. Uh, we who receive that uh, communion are to take and eat both the bread and, and to drink the cup in thankful remembrance that the body of Christ was broken for us. So as we take part in that communion meal, it's in some ways a confession of faith. Is it not? Every time we take that communion meal, we say, I believe in this Jesus. He is my Savior. His death is for me. I am included in His covenant. It's a work of faith, if you will, an act of faith, in which we rest in Christ and receive these outward elements for our spiritual growth and well-being. And they remind us that we are joined to Christ joined to his broken body and his shed blood. In some ways it reminds us that as we are joined to Christ, we are joined to his death. And we too must share in that death in our lives, being crucified to our old nature, dying to the wishes and desires of this life, committing ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ for his glory and praise. And so let us take part in this communion meal to the glory of God and to our mutual growth in grace.